What is the deadly wound in Revelation 13.3? And how was it healed? Revelation 13.3 And I saw one of the heads as it were wounded to death, and its deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast. This beast is ruled by the dragon, Satan, who gives power and authority to the beast to accomplish Satan's work. Revelation 13.2 And the dragon, Satan, gave him, the beast, his power and his throne and great authority. What is the dragon's character? We know the dragon, devil, or Satan is all the same entity and the father of lies due to the verse where Jesus is talking to the most Jewish people on the planet that don't believe in Jesus. John 8, 44. You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He, Satan, was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he's a liar and the father of it. Satan's goal to receive the worship of the world in place of Jesus Christ through deception and lies. That includes getting worship by way of deception from the angels. Revelation 12.4 In his tail drew the third part of the stars angels that follow Satan of heaven and did cast them to earth and the dragon stood before the woman, Mary, which was ready to, de to be delivered for to devour her child, Jesus, as soon as it was born. Satan did not succeed at killing Jesus as soon as he was born. So Satan was so brash, he tried to get Jesus Christ to worship him. Matthew 4, 8. Again, the devil took him, Jesus, up into an exceedingly high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, Matthew 4, 9, and said to him, All these things will I give you, if you will fall down and worship me, Matthew 4, 10. Then Jesus said unto him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You should worship the Lord your God, and him only should you serve. So when Jesus refused to worship Satan, he had his followers, the unbelieving Jews, kill Jesus. Satan knows he is not going to be able to kill everyone that has heard the truth that Jesus had been spreading for three and a half years. So he turns to killing their faith in Jesus. Satan's plan is to get them to worship him without them realizing it through what he is the father of, lies and deception. He knows if he can get them to worship him, that would kill their faith in Jesus and their everlasting spiritual life as well. He had already deceived most Jews into believing that they would reign over the world, which was Rome. They were deceived into believing they would conquer Rome with God's help. But Jesus said their house would be left desolate, which, which means God took the helper, the Holy Spirit, away from them. Jews believed after they conquered Rome, all non-Jews would be grafted into their earth, ruling Jewish kingdom. But God sent his son to tell them otherwise. They did not want to hear anything else. They now had for their father the devil. That's why they were killing the followers of Jesus. Satan was so good at deception, they had no idea 
that they were not serving the true Father God, and really they were heading for the lake of fire. Those who followed Jesus Christ and refused to be deceived and bow down to Satan and his followers were not worried about their body because they had the promise of getting a new spiritual body when their physical body died, just like Jesus did. It's in 1 Corinthians 15.44. The Bible that is, I mean, I'm sorry, the body that is planted is a physical body. When it is raised, it will be a spiritual body. There is a spiritual body, so there is also a physical body. This grand controversy between Christ and Satan started in the Garden of Eden when the serpent Satan lied and deceived Eve to go against God. Genesis 3.13 and the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, which means charm or enchant someone in a deceptive way. And I did eat. Genesis 3.14 And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field upon thy belly shall you go and the dust shall you eat all the days of your life genesis 3 15 15 or 13 through 15 and i will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed That referring to all that God, all that go against God or his son, in her seed, which refers to all that would uh, want to go by God or Jesus. He, Christ, shall bruise your head, Satan's head and his deceivers, and you, Satan, shall bruise his, Christ's, heel. Clearly, Satan and his followers, the Pharisees and Sadducees, bruised the heel of Christ when they called for Christ to be beaten beyond recognition and killed with the most painful, humiliating way, death on the cross, like a criminal. It was only like the heel of Christ that was bruised because he triumphantly rose from the dead and was given back a spiritual body he originally had in heaven before he was born on earth and in doing so saved the whole world of believers in him because his perfect body of no sin whatsoever was of such immense value it could pay for all sins of man that believed the Pharisees were those who kept the traditions that made the word of God of none effect, mentioned in Mark 7, 13, that Jesus so strongly rebuked, calling them vipers, serpents like Satan, hypocrites, synagogue of Satan, and of your father the devil. The Pharisees, which are Jews, were blasphemers because they said Jesus was doing all of his miracles through Satan and not through the very Holy Spirit of God the Father. Unbelieving Jews were haters of Jesus Christ and his followers. After Christ's crucifixion, the priests and the leaders of the Jews tried to destroy his followers, the disciples. James, the brother of John, was beheaded. Peter eventually crucified. Paul was beheaded. And John was exiled to the lonely island of Patmos where he wrote the book of Revelation. The oral traditions that the priests and the leaders of the Jews had already created from man's wisdom during the Old Testament times were expanded to include the denouncing of every Jesus, everything Jesus taught. 
these oral traditions were ex um, were written in over a hundred books, which is collectively called the Talmud, the holiest book of the Jews today. This is totally different than the book of the Old and the New Testament Bible that Christians go by. The Talmud says many things like Jesus is boiling in hot excrement in hell and that even the best of the Gentiles, non-Jews, should all be killed. Do a search on Google for the word Talmud for more information. What does he shall bruise the head in Genesis 3.15 mean? We have seen how the devil and his followers, the priests and leaders of the Jews, bruised Jesus' heel. But how did Jesus bruise the head of the devil and his followers? Clearly, Jesus bruised the head of Satan severely in the following ways. First, God's presence left the temple spiritually desolate in Jerusalem in 30 AD. The Spirit of God no longer resided in the physical temple. Matthew 21, 43, Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Matthew 23, 38, Shortly before his crucifixion, Jesus said to the Jews, your house, meaning temple, is left unto you desolate. The second way Jesus bruised the head of Satan severely destroyed the temple. In 70 AD, the Jewish temple, their very identity, which was their pride and joy, was utterly burnt down and destroyed physically by the Romans. Over one million Jews that did not believe in Jesus died, and 90,000 were taken captive for slavery. Jesus prophesied in 30 AD the temple being destroyed, and it happened in 70 AD. In Matthew 24, 2, Jesus looking at the temple said unto them, See you not all these things, referring to the temple? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. What temple do we use then? Now, with no physical temple, Jesus became the spiritual temple because he is said to, he said to the Pharisees while standing in the temple in Matthew 12, 6, But I say unto you, that in this place is one greater than the temple, speaking of himself being the spiritual replacement for the physical temple. John 2.19, Jesus said, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. He was talking about his body, the temple, being destroyed, because he knew the Jews were going to kill him. And after three days he would rise up again, as the new spiritual temple in the new spiritual Jerusalem, which is exactly what he did after the Jews killed him. 1 Corinthians 15.4 And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Where is this new Jerusalem? that the temple of Jesus is in. The Apostle John saw this new Jerusalem in heaven in Revelation 21.10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, heaven, and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Revelation 21.22, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb, Jesus, are the temple of it. There is no need for a physical temple anymore. So where is Jesus now? Matthew twenty-six sixty-four. Jesus said, 
Nevertheless, I say unto you, from now on shall you see the Son of Man, Jesus, sitting on the right hand of power, right hand of God, and coming in the clouds of heaven. He's talking about coming spiritually through the Holy Spirit. Matthew 28, 18, Jesus said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. John 14, 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, John 15, 26, But when the Comforter is come, the Holy Spirit, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me. So the second way Jesus bruised the head of Satan is by utterly destroying the unbelieving Jews' temple. Nothing was left. The third way Jesus bruised the head of Satan was the Jews and their religion leaders, the Pharisees, back in Jesus' day, were the founders of the satanic religion of the Talmud and had taught that if you had the documents proving you were of the physical lineage of Abraham, you would inherit the kingdom of God. But these records were all burnt up in the temple when it was destroyed. The complete identity of the Jews had been demolished. We know that it was not the physical lineage. That was important. Jesus even admitted that they were the physical seed of Abraham in John 8, 37. I know that you are Abraham's physical seed, but you seek to kill me because my words has no place in you, which means the spiritual seed of uh, Abraham was not in them. John eight thirty nine. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Now, what were the works of Abraham? God said in Genesis 18, 18 through 19, Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him, for I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. The Jews that Jesus was talking to were trying to kill Jesus, an innocent man, proving they were not going to be, they were not going by the commandments of Abraham to keep the way of the Lord and do justice. There is not justice in killing any innocent man, let alone the Son of God. If Abraham was their father, they would be the children with the spirit of justice in their heart, and just, just as Abraham taught in the scriptures that Jews claimed to know so well. Uh, but these unbelieving Jews are trying to kill the most innocent man ever to walk the planet, proving they are not children of Abraham's spirit. The word of God was accomplished. Genesis 3, 13 through 15. He, Christ, shall bruise your head, Satan's head, and his deceivers, and you, Satan, shall bruise his, Christ's heel. This prophecy was fulfilled from 30 AD to 70 AD. Revelation 13, 3. And I saw one of his heads as if were wounded to death. In conclusion, the head of the serpent was bruised, and it was a deadly wound. It occurred when Satan had taken over the godly kingdom of the Jews, who were doing Satan's will at the spiritually fallen temple in Jesus' day. The unbelieving Jews 
having had their temple abandoned spiritually by God, and then having it physically destroyed in 70 AD, when many thousands were taken captive, not only was the temple left desolate spiritually and then destroyed 40 years later physically, but so was the city of Jerusalem and the land of Israel, which had all the Jewish towns in it. The surviving Jews and their leaders, the Pharisees, were taken captive. Over one million Jews that did not believe in Jesus died, and 90,000 were taken captive in slavery. And the historical documents of their gene genealogical, uh, ge geneal genealogically uh, descendancy had been erased from history in the fire of the temple. I think it's fair to say, at this point, the unbelieving Jews were not the chosen people of God. If in 8030, the physical temple was left desolate by God of his Holy Spirit, whose spirit came rushing in to fill the void of the Holy Spirit in the temple for 40 years until the temple was completely destroyed in AD 70. <laughs> The leader, leaders and their followers of the now defiled physical temple kingdom, Israel, was now left unprotected by God and were no different than the six ungodly kingdoms before them. Satan climbed aboard and started riding it with full control in 30 AD when Jesus said, Your house is left desolate. It was now a beast kingdom of its own and not of God, but of man, just like the six beast kingdoms before it that were without God. But it is now the seventh beast kingdom. Jesus said to the generation of that present seventh beast kingdom, Israel, that they would see the destruction of it. Matthew 23, 36, Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. It lasted only one generation, 40 years, a very short time compared to all the six kingdoms before it. And in 70 AD, it received its deadly wound while it was trying to take over the Roman Empire. They did not believe Jesus and falsely thought God would still help them conquer Rome. But this war signaled the downfall of Rome and the destruction of Israel. Who were the six beast kingdoms before Israel became the seventh beast kingdom? Revelation 17 9. And here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains, kingdoms, on which the woman, Satan, sits. First beast kingdom, Assyria. Second beast kingdom, Egypt. Third beast kingdom, Babylon. Fourth Beast Kingdom, Medio Persia, Fifth Beast Kingdom, Greece. Sixth Beast Kingdom was Rome. And the seventh, last corrupt physical defiled temple kingdom of God, Beast Kingdom, Israel. <laughs> Revelation 17 10. And there are seven kings, five have fallen. First was Assyria, then Egypt, then Babylon, Media Persia, Greece, all had fallen by 30 AD. And one is, sixth, at the time Revelation was written, the Roman beast was, one is. And the other is not yet come when he comes, he must continue a short space. The seventh, last corrupt physical defiled kingdom. Israel beast nation lasted a short time of only 40 years. So the seventh Israel beast nation that was became destroyed in 70 AD and is not. Could this deadly wound ever be healed? Revelation 17 11 and the beast that was defiled Israel and is not destroyed in 70 AD. Even he is the eighth. Healed, defiled Israel, came in 1948 and is of the seven. 
the same as the previous seven beast nations listed above that were not of God and goes into perdition. Perdition is a state of eternal punishment and damnation into which a sinful and unpentant person passes after death. Could it be the deadly wound that Israel received was healed and came back as the eighth? Revelation 13.3 And his deadly wound was healed and all the world wandered after the beast. I will be using the word Zionist and what it means basically is someone or some group that believes Jews are still the chosen people of God, even if they say they believe what Jesus said about them, the Jews. Most Christians are Zionists and wander after the fake Israel and believe the Israel over in the Middle East is a miracle of God being that it came back in 1948. That is when Satan set up shop again and started riding the Jews again, having them murdering the people of Palestine in order to forcibly take back the land God himself had destroyed and took from them. Of course, the unbelieving Jews hate the Christians in Palestine, as well as the non-Christian Palestinian people, because they would not bow down to the Jews as the chosen people of God and give them their land. The Palestinians still knew what Jesus said about the unbelieving Jews, even 68 years ago in the year of 1948, when the extermination of all non-Jews in Palestine started. This deadly wound being healed refers to the present-day Jews illegally confiscation of the land of the Palestine and their continuing genocide of the Palestinians. This prophecy refers to their clandestine and illegal takeover of virtually every country in the world through control of each country's money supply headquartered in the U.S. A the superpower of the world. This includes the Jewish Rothschilds in England, who literally run the world, and the Federal Reserve in the U.S., whose entire board of directors is composed of Jews. They also rule the world through the mainstream media that they own in all the countries that promote the belief that we should support Israel because they are the chosen people of God. They use this media to keep the world deceived with this lie that the Jews are the chosen people of God and should be in charge of it. And so all the world wandered after them. The definition of wandered is a feeling caused by seeing something that is very surprising or amazing, etc. Because the Zionist Christians have been told by the Jews that this resurrection or recreation of the land is an amazing thing of God, they start worshiping them because they don't have the knowledge of what the Bible says. Hosea in 4 6 May people, my people, are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they have rejected knowledge. I will out also reject them, that they should be no priest to me, seeing that they have forgotten the law of their God. I will also forget their children. Because of the Jews' corrupt business practice, or practicing of occult doctrine taught in the Talmud, their propensity to take over completely every nation they enter, their destruction of every moral noble and good in every nation they enter, they're despised of Jesus Christ and all the followers of his word for the last 1878 years since they were destroyed. They have been reviled by the population of the earth. They have been thrown out and banned from over a hundred countries of the world. 
Do you believe the words of Jesus? Because if Jesus said not one stone would be left on another, what is the wailing wall? What is revered by the Jews of today as the wailing wall, purportedly to be a wall of the temple? that Jesus was referring to having not one stone left upon another. It is not part of the temple at all. According to archaeologists, that wall was part of a totally separate building. Today's Jews' hatred for Jesus is proof that they are not spiritual children of Abraham. By their continued hatred for Jesus and their lack of proof that they are the physical ancestors of Abraham, because of all the lineage documents were burnt up with the temple in 70 AD, they no longer have anything to tie them to God. They don't believe in Jesus, so they no longer have God for their father, and now have the devil for their father, according to Jesus. John 5.23, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honors not the Son, honors not the Father which has sent him. They have no choice but to do what their father of the lie says, which is to lie and say they are still the chosen people. They no longer have a temple, and they have to steal land to have a country. They were wanderers for 1946 years. The Zionist Jews are worshipped by all humanity that are Zionist in nature, including Zionist Christians and Zionist neocons of all governments that tell you to support Israel because the Jews are still the chosen people of God. There's also the worship that has already begun with the adulation of Hollywood owners producers, and celebrities, virtually all whom are Jews. Nobel Prize winners, prize controlled by Jews, and given to Jews, and U.S. government leaders, a large percentage of whom are Jews, including Obama. His mother was Jewish. Bill and Hillary Clinton, her maiden name was Jewish. Raditsky, not Rodham. And the following. Here is the current Jewish members of the Obama administration. Uh, this is quite the long list, but you can uh, pause it and look at yourself. But just, I mean, you've got the Deputy National Security Advisor, Jew. The Director of Intergovernmental Affairs, Deputy Director of Public Engagements. The Chairman, Committee, Futures Trade Commission, Secretary of Treasury. Middle East Policy Advisor, Associate and Director, Office of Public Engagement for Jewish Outreach, Senior Advisor to the President, Ambassador to Israel, Director of National Economic Council. Uh, the Federal Reserve and former Jewish members are of the Federal Reserve, the Securities and Exchange Commission, Senior Director of Middle East National Security Council, the Chief of Staff to the President, Advisory to the President, Solicitor General of the United States, Director of Office, if the list goes on and on, you can stop this and look at it any time you want. Um, and including former President Lyndon Johnson and his wife, Lady Bird, both Jews, Harry S. for Sol Solomon, Truman, and Franklin Delano. And Eleanor Roosevelt changed from Roosevelt. We now know who Mystery Babylon was and is. The present day Israel come back in 1948. The deadly wound has been completely healed, and the present day Jews have totally control of the world through the superpower nation of the world. They don't have to physically kill or force all peoples to worship them. Even the Christians are already doing it along with the neocon politicians willingly because they have, haven't been spiritual enough to understand what the spiritual scriptures mean. They have been deceived 
But the ones that followed Jesus' words have not been deceived and are in the book of life. But Satan and his followers, the Jews, want your spirit that has everlasting life killed. Like it says in Revelation 13, 8 through 15. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, the beast power, whose name are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. How does one take the mark of the beast nation Israel? Many Christian denominations believe that the mark of the beast will be a chip of the hand indeed. The governments would love to chip all citizens, but that's not the mark of the beast. The Seventh-day Adventists believe that the mark of the beast is adherence to coming Sunday law. Again, the Pope would love for there to be a Sunday law enforced in America and around the world because Sunday is Satan's day of worship, the worship of a pagan sun god, rather than the worship of the god of the Bible on the day he designated as holy, the seventh-day Sabbath. It was commanded to be kept holy until Jesus came the first time and replaced it with himself because in John 5.39, Jesus said, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. So the seventh day testifies of Jesus, first coming. And we are to rest in him, having the truth and the proof of the mercy of God sent to pay for all our sins except the sin of de denying Jesus. But both the physical and uh, the physical understanding of the embedded chip in the worship of a particular day is all a unbeliever can understand because they cannot understand spiritually. The mark of the beast will not be able to be discerned by an unbeliever because it is spiritual. It involves the character of an individual and only God knows the heart. The word mark comes from the Greek word character. You have the mark of the beast if, you, if you've if you taken on the beliefs and in in developed the character of the beast power. You will support the killing of innocent women and children in Palestine just like the Jews wanted the innocent son of man Jesus killed. You become like the beast power and call yourself the chosen people of God or you support them as the chosen people of God like the Zionist Christians and call yourselves a follower of Christ at the same time. The same time you support Israel, Israel's killing of innocent people just like the Jews that killed Jesus. Jesus said they were Jesus said they were followers of Abraham, yet they wanted to kill him, an innocent man, which now qualifies you as a hypocrite, just like Jesus called the Jews that wanted to kill him. All these types have the character of Satan. You develop the same moral characteristics of the beast power by exhibiting the following. Desire for fame or recognition, desire for wealth, the love of money is the root of all evil. The desire to be special, the Jews claim to be God's chosen people. Zionist Christians believe those in the, their church are the only ones who will be saved by being grafted into the Jews because of their support for them. Playing the victim. Delight in suffering. Jews in the Holocaust and everyone hates us. We need billions to protect ourselves. Embracing, endorsing, and delighting in violence, greed, and corruption in movies, on TV, in books, in Hollywood, and in government. 
lack of real concern for others that don't believe the lie of Jews are the chosen people. The Zionist Christian's response is, it does not matter what the Jews do or say. They are still the chosen people of God. You are just prejudiced anti-Semites. Working for God rather than being one with God and letting God work through them including stealing the works and properties of others in order to have a ministry like the Zionist Christians or stealing land like the Zionist Jews. If God was working through you, he would provide these things without you having to deceive others with Satan's lies to get it. The true test of a saint is not successfulness, it's faithfulness to Jesus Christ. <laughs> The January 10th, uh, 1963 con con Congressional Record that reveals the 45 things that the Communist New World Order Jewish alumni <laughs> plan to do to America, most has been accomplished. Replacing what Jesus said in the scriptures with social religion that recognizes the Israel over in the Middle East, as from God himself, is one of them that are left. So they're working a day and already have made it a law in some countries to make it a hate crime worthy of jail if you go against them with Jesus' words. The majority of Christians have turned to the unbelieving Zionist Jews and become came Zionist Christians and have already taken the mark of the beast without even understanding what they've done because of this false belief that the unbelieving Jews are still the chosen people of God. If you claim to be a Christian, you have to go by what Jesus himself said when he was talking to the most Jewish people on the planet that refused to believe him. In John 8, 44, quote, you are of your father, the devil. Now, the whole reason Jesus says this to the Jews is because they don't believe the father, God of all creation. When he said he would send mercy through his son to forgive them. And they did not believe what Jesus was saying. So let's make it clear. If someone is of God, they believe in his son, Jesus, and are the chosen people of God. John 1 12 but as many as receive him Jesus to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name but if somebody is of the devil they are not of God and cannot be the chosen people of God the Zionist Christians look like sheep on the outside because they say they believe what Jesus says, but speak like the devil because Zionist Christians go directly against the words of Jesus by saying Jews that don't believe in Jesus are not of the devil, but are of God. This is the spiritual mark of the beast. If your leaders of your country do not go along with this belief that you should support Israel, because they are the chosen people of God, you or your country will be sanctioned and your monetary accounts will be frozen so you cannot buy or sell with all the other beast nations. And if that doesn't work, they will bomb you and your country into submission like they already have in the Middle East to so many countries around Israel and are still doing so today to countries that don't support the beast nation Israel. Besides the word mark, meaning having the mental character of the beast, it also points to identifying the beast physically, like it says in Revelation 13, 17, and that no man might buy or sell unless he had the mark or the name of the beast, or the name of the number of his name. All three of these are one and the same. The mark being the emblem 
emblem of a star. The name being Israel, that the star represents, and the number is the star having six points, six triangles, and six, uh, a six-sided hexagon in the middle. If you have the mark of going directly against what Jesus said, whom has been given all power under God by, by God, and says, say Jews that don't believe in Jesus are of God rather than going uh, by what Jesus said when he said to the most Jewish people on the planet that didn't believe in him, In John 8:44 it says Jesus says you are of your father the devil and the lust of your father you will do he Satan was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaks of lie he speaks of his own for he is a liar and the father of it it's very clear that these Jews did not have the father of all creation, God, because they did not have Jesus. Like it says in John, 2 John 1, um, 9, where whoever transgresses and abides not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. For those that don't believe that the Jews are the of the devil because they don't have Christ, it says in John 1, 11, for he that bids him Godspeed is a partaker of his evil deeds. When Jesus was telling his disciples how he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day, Peter, a believer in Christ, a Christian, said, This shall not be unto you. Jesus told Peter how he felt about him, going directly against the words Jesus had just said. In Matthew sixteen twenty three, but he turned and said to Peter, "Get behind me, Satan! You are an offense unto me, for you savor not the things that be of God, but those that be of men." Luke sixteen fifteen, you are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed, like Israel, among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Do you highly ex uh, esteem Jews that don't believe in Jesus, that justify themselves before men, calling themselves the chosen people of God, yet don't have the Son?